Creative Bee Studios. I'm Carla. I'm the designer of more than 50 quilt patterns that use both beautiful sides of fabric. Today we're going to look at Dragonfly Pond. Before we start, please be sure to subscribe, click like, and tap the bell. We have some new viewers to YouTube, so let me explain that when you click subscribe, it means then Creative Bee Studios will be in your subscriptions. It's not like a big sign up for emails or uh, you know, your firstborn or anything like that. Oh, and be sure to check out my Etsy shop where there are seven new quilter t-shirt designs and many more to come. The link will be in the description below. I designed Dragonfly Pond for Hoffman California Fabrics a couple of years ago. It was to focus and showcase this uh, fabric line and they put it in their projects catalog which they show to shop owners uh, in efforts to sell the fabric to shop owners and eventually to all of us. So as you can see dragonflies are the focus. They were the focus fabric and they had a couple of different colorways. Here's a little swatch of the focus fabric. This is the reverse. I hope you can see the dragonflies because these dragonflies are reflected in the lily pads below them by using the reverse of those focus fabrics. Isn't that cool? I thought that was pretty cool. So these were cut broidery purse straight from the fabric. I had fusible on the back and then cut the dragonflies out. The dragonfly pond pattern, you will get a full size template and you also get outlines of the dragonflies. Even though these were cut broidery purse from the focus fabric, uh, this fabric is probably very limited. So uh, you can make dragonfly pond still with your own fabric and use the templates that I provided in the pattern. Suppose you'd rather have a butterfly pond. Well, look at this little fabric I just found. This is an Anna Maria Horner, but you might be thinking you don't want a pink pond. Well, what you need to remember is that you're going to cut the butterflies away from the background. So only the color of the butterflies are what you will see on your quilt. Here's an example of a butterfly fabric that's beautiful, cute little butterflies. However, see how tiny those butterflies are? The smaller the motif, the more you're going to cut. So if you're cool with cutting a lot of butterflies, this would be adorable. Otherwise, look for a little bit larger motif. Now imagine if you wanted to make something else like bees, or I would love to do this, a frog pond, and you would have frogs hopping to and fro, and you have lily pads. It would just be so cute. I hope one of you do that and share it. Of course, you would change all of your background fabrics to go with whatever you're wanting your pond to look like. Now let's talk about the background a little bit. This is very different from a lot of my other uh, quilt patterns that you've probably seen. So it starts off at the bottom with this batik, and it, that's, the batik is also used for the cattails and leaves. You don't have to use a batik here, but I needed to use their fabric and it was one where I did not want to use a reverse and batiks don't have a reverse. They, if it's a true batik, it'll be the same on the front and the back. So this worked out perfectly. Then as we go up the line, these are some of their different fabrics in their line and the reverse is right above each one. Notice these are some of the butterflies in their line. So each one, these bubbles, this is the reverse, the hydrangeas, this is the reverse. Now at the top I used some wildflowers and there's no reverse above it. The binding was done with this same batik that was used at the bottom of the pond. Now let's talk about how this stair step technique works. I just have some small eight inch samples here. Well, they're not eight inches anymore, but they were. Uh, you would take rectangles of each of these fabrics and their reverse and stitch them together this way you stitch them together then you will cut them apart in different sections which would be different widths so this one is two and a half inches the next one might be three and a half inches the next one might be two inches so you'll cut these all apart and then you'll move them up and down so as you can see here 
they move up and down and I made them have kind of a, a movement with the pond to look like ripples. That's what the light parts are adding is some ripples and some dimension in the pond. So you will move your pieces up and down, sew them together, press them apart, and you will have the varying structure of your background. So it's a lot of fun. It is a pretty easy quilt. It goes together fast. The background takes a little bit more time than my generally my other uh, backgrounds, but it's such a fun process. Please be sure to reach out if you have any questions. I can't wait to see what ideas you come up with and what kind of pond themes you come up with. So subscribe, click like, and tap the bell. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you next time. Bye. I just spit. Isn't that kind of cool?